Get yourself away from all distractions and your phone and ask yourself, what is it that we are trying to achieve? Nobody's going to build your business for you, so you need to get the time to learn how to do marketing. For the majority of people, when they have first come into self-employment and first start starting their, their business on their own, it's um, feast or famine. 2017, I nearly lost the business. The truth is I'd built on, on dodgy foundations and I was kind of just hoping for the best. We were doing a hell of a lot of, of boilers, but there weren't really any, any profit in it. It gets to the back end of the month, I'm doing my, my accounts, and I think, we haven't made no money. Even though we had had the most, um, the most volume and the most turnover at that point than, than ever before. What did you do in that moment? Because I'm sure there's going to be people listening who, who maybe are in a similar position. Here's a golden question. What an introduction. You're in for an incredible episode here. But before we dive in, can I just take two seconds from you just to hit the subscribe button on YouTube or leave us a review in your favorite podcasting platform. It's an enormous help to us and the guests. That's enough from me. Let's dive into this episode. Tommy Lee's Muda, welcome. Hello, Matt. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me along. It's uh, absolutely fantastic to to have you on. Uh, we obviously have been spending a bit of time talking to each other over the last few months, and this is a, a fascinating opportunity to really delve deep into who you are, who is Tommy. So, just to kick you off, you've run yep. the boiler business and the built to last training program. How did that happen? Right, okay. Uh, originally, we have to say, uh, originally, um, other than starting the, the boiler business early 2018, um, the predecessor to, to Built to Last was actually Dominate Marketing, which will will explain the reason why we, we've ended up with uh, Dominate Marketing back in 2017, 2018. Um, basically, because... At the time, um, I built up a, a boiler installation business in, in Sheffield and that was absolutely dominating, absolutely dominating uh, Google search. So it was all about organic um, organic traffic. We had spent a hell of a lot of money on, on what I call advertising, um, but came to the conclusion that basically SEO and, and Google was, was the way to go. Um, however... Um, around about that time, 2000, 2017, I, I think it was, um, I, I nearly lost the business. Something that I, I often talk about is building a, uh, the, the Tower of, of Pisa. You know, we built something that people looked at, that people thought, oh, that, that looks good, that looks impressive, that looks busy. Oh, they're busy. They're always picking up boilers from, from the merchants. How many vans is there? Um, but the truth is I, I'd, I'd built on, on dodgy foundations and I could see that the business was leaning over. I could see that the business could fall over and I was kind of just hoping for the best. Yeah, um, You can see a lot of, of our Built to Last branding is, is all, all about Rome. It's all about you know building. Rome wasn't built in a day, that, that saying, and I have visited Rome and, and the Colosseum. Um, so from from visiting Rome and thinking about my my own business at, at the time, I just thought it, it weren't built to last. Um, so having written the um, Dominate Marketing program of of three months, and we'd we'd already started uh, training people. Um, as we start to look at the program as a whole and think, well, well, what's missing? What's missing from this program that that the plumbing and heating industry could do with? And we, we thought, well, we, we're not talking about systems, Payaka. <laughs> uh, we're not talking about sy systems and, and we're not really talking about the most important thing in, in your business and, that, and that's foundations, you know. Or do you, um, are you looking after your time? Are you controlling time, not looking after it? Are you controlling time? Are you looking after your money? Are you looking after profits? Um, but this is one thing that I, I think a lot, a lot of people are missing and that's not having any, any direction not knowing where they're going or what they want to 
or where they want to go. Uh, so this is this is where the the built to last brand um, came in as we sat down and and thought right if we if we were to do a day one if we were to do one day that kind of captures everything together it's, it's got marketing it's got systems it's got foundations in what will it be and that that's where where built to last um, came about so we first started delivering built to last in in 2019 uh originally delivering it as as live training um and then that thing called called the pandemic came along and kind of made us um, switch our direction and, and start taking things things online. So yeah, that's that's how how we started off with with built to last. The the step before that really was uh, looking at, at the plumbing and heating industry and kind of say, well, there's a lot of Facebook Facebook groups out there, but there's there's no one specifically talking about the business side of of our trade. You know how how can how can we help people uh, to to give them an environment to openly talk about the business side of their trade without being pulled down, uh, which is you know is has been a problem in in, in years past. I'm, I'm sure that doesn't happen now, but you know back back then it, it was it was a problem. So we um, built a you know a nice friendly. We always say nice and friendly. It's not really a case of trying to build. A huge community it's about having a friendly community um so that started 2018 around about the same time that that we started the uh, dominate marketing program so Over 2018 two 2019 mm-hmm. you've you've figured a lot of stuff out and i think the fact that you've got that ability now to sort of divulge all of that wisdom that you've built up is is just really based on that experience and, and and each of those aspects of your life that you've gone through one of them that really stands out you touched on was when you nearly lost the business i yeah. think that is something that is a huge opportunity for people to learn from and i'd love to delve into that like take me back to the point when that happened when was that and and, and what was the point that you realized Okay, well, let, let, let me just wrong. paint a, a visual picture for you here. Looking at a mountain, looking up at it and thinking, I can do that, no problem. And marching up it with with your team and then kind of getting to the top and thinking, wish I'd not done this, okay? That's exactly what, what happened in, 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 in my business. Um, you know, we, we still have the business now. Um, not at, at the scale that that it was back back then, but it's it's not about volume. It's not about turnover. It's about is your business providing what what you need it to provide for you. Um, but I guess the what what happened going back to the analogy of looking at, at that mountain is we we climbed the mountain as a team. Uh, we built up to to seven members of staff, which is not. It, it's not a ginormous business, but it's you know it's a decent little little business doing decent volume and decent decent turnover. Um, but we got to the top of the mountain with six members, seven members of staff. We were doing a hell of a lot of of boilers, but there weren't really any any profit in it. So then then what happened um, from from going uh, from going to bed. On late January night, I think it was, so just after the peak season, peak peak season, you know, that, that quarter leading up to Christmas where, where you're installing lots and lots of boilers and, you know, staff are, are totally run off, off the feet. And you think, surely, surely we must have made some decent profit. And I used to always do, do my accounts once a month. And it gets to the back end of the month, I'm doing my, my accounts, and I think, we haven't made no money, you know. We've done all that work, but where is the money? It's not in the bank account. It's not under the mattress. It's not under the pillowcase. I can't stash it anywhere else. So where is it? I've I've gone to bed, and and it's something that we we often uh, tell in, in in the built to last training. You know, John's story. John went to bed, and and he woke up the next day, and and he was twenty six thousand pound in in debt. 
how did he go to bed and, and then wake up the next day suddenly in debt? And it was really, really simple because he didn't have his his eyes on 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 his money properly. He didn't have the accounting software in place. He was relying on a relic of of an accountant um, to to say what what profit and loss was basically. And what my mistake was when going to bed that day is I'd not counted the fact that I've got to pay the staff <laughs> the following weekend. And I were losing money, even though we had had the most um, the most volume and the most turnover at that point than than ever before. So you know it was a real slap in the face of something's not going right here. Everybody else is is looking at you that are not in your business and thinking, well, you know things must be re- really good. But the truth were we were. Um, you know, we were selling ourselves too cheap in order to to be busy to keep to keep the staff busy. So that was like the the top of the mountain. Coming down oh. off the mountain, I have to say, coming down, it was possibly harder than than going up. Um, because that was all about trying to um, you know, rein things in, putting your prices up. So not just trying to compete on price, not just being busy, um, doing doing cheaper work to keep the lads busy. It was all about how can we start to make this profitable? How can we start to increase our perceived value? How can we start to uh, charge more money? How can we start to attract better customers? And and that that there were more learned coming down off that mountain than than what they were going going up. Going up was was the marketing. In a, in in some way, coming down was mm. more business management and and trying to systemize. Yeah, so it were it it was a long journey. I have to say, you know, we go all the way back when when I first took on a member of staff was two thousand thirteen. Um, up to that point of of peaking that mountain was. 2016 I think it was and and then and then coming down coming down on 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 the other side and it was coming down off off the other side of the mountain that that I, I once said to someone if you if you turn around and looked at this and you had a choice look do I go up there or do I go around what what would what would you do if you had to do it again and my answer my answer was I'd, I think I'd go around rather than go up there's plenty of nice hills to look at if I go around. I don't have to climb that mountain without the right equipment. So yeah, that that's where the mountain uh, analogy comes from. So in, in that moment where you realised you kind of reached the peak of that mountain, as you put it, but mm-hmm. in actual fact, it wasn't working. How did you get started on coming down? How, what did you do in that moment? Because I'm sure there's there's going to be people listening who who maybe are in a similar position that they have built something that isn't built to last. It is like, how do you start to turn that around? Because you talk about how that being such a, you know, a tough journey, but you've got to start I, somewhere, I guess. Well, well, I guess I, I, this is how, how I'd prefer to, to explain this <clears throat> is what we do in the training is go right back to the start. Forget about what, what happened at the top of the mountain because it was hard it was it was damn hard trying to come down simply because we'd not put the infrastructure in to the business at the start and and this is something that i see time and time and time again on on all these facebook groups of people just in a rush to get busy that's that's all what you hear are you busy how busy are you how many boilers are you fitting nobody says how many days a week are you are you working no one says. Well, how much profit do you make? How much profit are you making? You know, it's not about turnover, gross profit. It's about how much money are you making per per. How much money are you actually walking away with per hour and, and per week? How many weeks of a year can can you take off? You know. Um, so what? How I'd prefer to say is, well, if we were to do it all again, how? How how would you do it? And this is everything that we've put in into the, the built to last 
um, workshop, by the way, rebuilt that um, last year, um, uh, relaunched, built to last November last year, and we've spent the last six months last six months getting that on online. Um, so if, if we were to do it all again, it's not to be in a rush to to get busy, not to be in a rush to get five members of staff. I, I'm, I'm not against not getting staff. I, I totally agree. Yes, there comes a point where you have to get get staff. What what I argue against is not getting more staff. Mm. We need staff. But, that, but that's how you facilitate getting to your goal, right? So is what you're saying really about starting at the beginning and defining what those goals, what are you actually trying to achieve? And then everything else is like how you get there. Whereas using a metric of like, how busy are you in that moment? How many staff you've got is all like, they're not useful in themselves. That's just how you get to the goal that you have defined, whether that be, I want to work three days a week or I want to you know, generate this much profit, like whatever, whatever that goal is for you, that's the most important thing. And if you haven't done that exercise, how do you possibly measure that success? And, and, and here's, here's a golden question and it's something for people to, you know, to sit down, turn their phone off, stop talking to everybody and, and go and have, have an hour on, on themselves, preferably in the pub, go to the pub, <laughs> get a pint and sit down with no distractions whatsoever on your own and think about what exactly is it that, that you're trying to achieve. If you're not one to go to the pub, go to the spa, go to the spa. Didn't Try see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a great think room for me. Um, yeah. You know, just whatever it is, go for a walk, go go for a run if you can think while while you run. I know you're in into into riding. Um, whatever it is that is your quiet moment, fishing, for instance. Yeah. yeah. Get yourself away from all distractions and your phone, and ask yourself, what is it that we are trying to achieve? Are we trying to achieve to be busy? Why are we trying to get busy? Often it's because it's going to be more money. All right, so the answer is not to get busy. The answer is I want more money. But then that's probably not even enough of a goal in itself. It's like, but why? Why do you want that money? What is it that you want to... And Because if you measure it by the money, you're never going to be happy because it's it's what that gets you. We we always need more money. Yeah, Yeah, you can just keep... And now through, you know, through my own, because clearly I'm, I'm... talk left and right here you know, i'm i'm far on on one side for i want the time that's that's the that, that is what drives me is time not money i know if i have time i'll get money no problem i know if i chase the money i'm going to run out of time and if i keep on chasing that money i'm, I'm 42 years old now i'm, I'm going to run out of time soon so to me, it's it's more important that I focus on the time. When I when I've got the time, I can I can make more money, and 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 a lot of people in the industry don't approach that. And like I said, I'm I'm, I'm far on on one side. I understand um, that you know people that are um, trying to save up for a mortgage, people that are saving up for for a wedding, for instance, people that are trying to get the kid off to university, whatever. There's always financial pushers the reason why we need to make more money at this certain point in life but i think where a lot of people fail is it's always about trying trying to get the money and in trying to get the money all the time they create self-inflicted busyness and self-inflicted business leaves no time to invest in into our business and if we can't invest in into our business we can't improve the marketing to attract the better customers to pay us more money so that we make more money per hour. If we can make more money per hour, we have two choices. We can either choose to take it ourselves and have a, a lifestyle business, more fishing, more camping, more camper van, going off to France and, and Spain or wherever you want, you want to go, or 
we can put it into a team. We can invest in, in a team. Um, the other side of it is, you know, we, we need to get the time because nobody's going to build your business for you. So you need to get the time to learn how to, to do marketing. You need to get the time to to invest into your Payaka CRM system. I can't put that one in. Dropping out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, this is it. Because uh, how many times do we see on, on social media groups people saying, I've got this software, I can't use it. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to set it up for me. Mm. You know, um, I've had this for six months and I've not even scratched the surface. So to, you're, you're paying for this. You're paying for the software and and you don't have the time to, to put into it. And it's self-inflicted busyness. And that mm. and I'm not just pointing this at the plumbing and heating industry. It's it's society as a whole. You get patted on the back. You know, even if I'm not talking to a tradesperson, someone will say to, to me, Are oh, you busy? And I think I offend some people when I say I don't like the word busy. <laughs> Please don't ask me if I'm busy. Um, they don't get it because they're not used to people saying that because that's just society. But then in um, in, in the trade industries, it's even more than that. And, and I know the reason why we are all striving, the, the busyness, it's because for the majority of people, when they have first come into self-employment and first start starting their, their business on their own, it's um, feast or famine. That's what it is. It's if I don't eat as much as what I can right now, because I don't know how many weeks mm-hmm. it's going to be until I get some more more money. Or if I don't make all this money this this winter, I don't know how how I'm going to get through through the summer. And they just and you know once they're on that wheel, it, mm-hmm. it just keeps on going. I have to be busy. I have to be busy. I have to say yes. I cannot possibly go into next week with only two days work booked in and will not survive. And it's feast, feast or famine. Mm. So yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big against like stopping and saying to, to people, what is it that, that you're trying to achieve? Every, yeah. every family is different. Every business is different. The reason why every business is different is because there's a different, person behind it there's a different family behind it there's a different team of people behind it people change as well i mean you know? i mean that also that that question of 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 what you're looking to achieve that's the same question that every single person should who runs a business should ask whether that be your customer who wants to heat their home or for us, people who are, you know, looking at software to solve certain problems is sitting down with them and saying, what are the problems that you have? What are you looking to achieve? Before you even start thinking about the solution, before you go into like how how you could possibly solve it, is to get people to answer that question. And that is the best way you can help them. It doesn't matter what the business is. It's always the same. It's always that. If you're working with clients, it is what are you looking to achieve? And that's the same for your business as well. And that's the only way that you can start to figure out how you can solve that problem is defining what it is. I like analogies. And and, and the reason for that is because it, it paints a, a picture. You know, um, let's be honest, many, many people in, in, in our industry are males, okay? Males tend to like vis- visualization, you know? And and when we close his eyes and we hear audible, we hear things, we, we paint pictures in, in our in our minds. So that's the reason why I like an analogies so much. And one reason why I'm going to this, other than going up and down the mountain, is every business is different and every person, every business owner is different and we need a different house. You know? Some people just want a bungalow. For them, the two kids and, and the missus or fella. Um, some people are going to need are going to need a few semi-detached houses, maybe four, or an apartment block. And some people are going absolute 
deep and needing a full full estate. The question is, what what is it that, that, that you're trying to achieve? If you're just going to be happy with looking after you and, and your own family, we just need to build a bungalow. If you are going to be taking on a small team of people, you're going to need an apartment block. An apartment block's going to need deeper foundations. An apartment block is going to need, need a little bit of marketing to, to attract some people, more people, more customers, and more systems. So it's, it's all about what is it what is it that you're 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 trying to achieve? At what? Where are you in life? Also, definitely, yeah. you know the the guys that are coming in in the twenties. Next Pimlico, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got a lot of respect. <laughs> I've got a lot of respect. Um, you know, you you got to look at the the eighties hairstyle and think. Well, he's he's, he's carrying <laughs> it on. You know, um, I've got a lot of respect. But you know, the guys coming in 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 the twenties are. I can do this. And then the guys in the 40s a bit like, it's either I'll stay as I am, <laughs> I'll stay as I am, or I've been there and I've done that and I've figured mm. out that um, I'm better off smaller. You know, The younger you are, it seems to be the more am- ambitious you are, which is fair, mm. fair play. You know? So fair I, play. I, 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 do, I do think that is part of it, like being younger, but another part of it is just being fresh and new to something and i think that is also something for you um that it wasn't like you started you know plumbing and heating as an apprentice you came from other experiences in other industries and that just coming into something fresh with your you know none of the bad experiences or there's nothing that's really like tarnishing that view of what's possible is something that I think is important there. So uh, the age, I, I think, yeah, it, it, it's it's relevant. And make, maybe you're hungrier, but I think being new, and that is also something that would be great to talk a little bit about how you did start and how you got into plumbing and heating and w- where you came from there, because I think that also helps shape what you're able to offer people um, in your training programs now. Absolutely. Um, so where, where Matt's going on this, because me and Matt have had, several conversations over the last number of months. Um, I I was not a plumbing and heating apprentice at the age of 16. Um, at the age of 24, I was at university doing music technology. Um, straight out of university, I was running a record store. The entirety of my 20s, I was a professional DJ. Um so being a DJ and running a record store, um, I got a little bit of time on, on my hands. Um, but what I saw back in 2005, 2006 is that the people coming in and spending money were tradespeople. No, there were no plumbing and eating engineers <laughs> coming in and spending money on, on records. It was all electricians, uh, aircon people, plasterers, builders, uh, joiners. I can't remember a plumber. Uh, coming coming in that record shop, but what they used to do on on a on a Saturday morning, I, I can remember it because as you know, as a guy in at the age of twenty four, twenty five, I was a bit more naive, maybe, um, and I was looking at these guys coming in who who were working on on site, and they were walking in with shopping bags worth of nice clothes that they've just bought. They were splashing hundred pound, hundred and fifty pound every week cash. On, on vinyl records because I was a vinyl dealer um, and then talking up how, how they're going out to you know to the best place in, in the city on, on Saturday night every week and as a 24, 25 year old guy I was a bit like mm. this music industry thing for me is mm, I need some of that cash I need to get another trade um, I need to get a mortgage I want a car you know, I wanted all, all these things that I, I was imagining that these trades people were, were getting and I was missing out on through through being uh, in, in the music industry. Now, because I was in the music industry, I'm running a record shop and selling records across the globe, I was totally at home on, on the internet. I was totally at home with software systems. 
because that's what I studied, um, music technology. It was nothing about doing the DJing. It was more the fact that everything had led up to that point in, in 2006 when, when the record shop owner turned to me and said, uh, one of the old directors wants to come back into the business. And I thought, mm, there's, not, there's not enough room for, for the three of us. So I know what I'll do. I'll go and take a loan. I'll go and study to be some tradesman. I don't know what I'll do. I'll do electrics. <laughs> might do electrics. Might do gas. Might do aircon. I can't remember, you know, where where I was at. Um, and and that's what I did. I, I took out a loan. Uh, left the record shop. Took out a loan. I was still DJing professionally for four years after that point. Um, and and I went and signed on to one of these evening gas courses for seven thousand pound why did you pick gas um, why did i pick gas i'll tell you why because the literature the brochure okay this is back in corgi days the brochure had multi-skilled gas engineer and it had a gas em- emblem and it had corgi plumbing i'm sure and it had corgi electrics and i was like imagining myself to be like some sort of energy superhero With three badges across my chest. I, I could see it. I've got a cape. You know, energy superhero. Don't worry, lady. I'll help you. Something like that. Um, so I, 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 I took the loan, went to do do the training, and hey-ho, I kind of didn't expect, well, you've got to get a portfolio. How would you get a portfolio when you don't have a job? <laughs> oh. So it took me a while. Uh, to to get that portfolio together, um, and at the age of twenty nine, I'm a qualified gas engineer with no experience. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd got plumbing experience, but I'd, I'd never had a job, and that basically forced me into my little boys here, by the way. Um, that totally forced me into I've got to go self employed. I, can't, I you know I can't apply for a job. I've got the qualification. By the way, I only had gas by that point. I never got the electrics. Um, I've got the qualification, but I don't have the experience, so I can't get the job. So my only route into this is, is to be self-employed. All right, so I'm self-employed. I've got the qualification, but the phone's not ringing. I've been sold a lie. It cost me £7,000. They promised me. They told me I'd be on £45,000 in 2007. It's now 2022. <clears throat> you know? So I, 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 and I, I, I look at the industry and I see all these people coming from outside the industry. I see all these people coming from, um, from out of the forces, for instance. And a lot of people make the same, I'm not going to call it a mistake. They choose the same route. And they imagine that just because I've got the qualification, I will get a job. Just because I've got the qualification... And I get some business cards and I get a sign put down the side of my van. My phone's going to ring. And it's like a big wake-up call when you're not going to get that 40 grand job and the phone's not going to ring. We see it time and time again. It's people not knowing where to go next. They are walking round and round in circles. They're in the woods. They're stuck. You know, They've been doing it for one year, five years, ten years. And they don't know how, how to get out. For me, getting the phone to ring is massively important. It's massively because, you know, without the phone ringing, without some money coming in, we can't eat, we can't pay the rent, we can't pay the mortgage. Once that phone starts ringing, this is where people get it wrong, is once they start ringing, they just think, because of this feast or or famine that started in, in the early days, it's all about getting busy, getting busy, getting busy. Oh, I'm now too busy, I've got to get staff. I get the staff, now I've got to get busy, but I'm not busy, and I've got to keep them busy. And then your overheads go up, but you don't have the time to invest into your marketing. You don't have the time or money to invest into your systems. So ultimately, coming all the way back to the start of, of this story and, and all the analogies, you've you've built on, on dodgy foundations. You've built the Leaning Tower of Pisa. 
it's only going to go up so so far. You put another story on top of that, it's going to come down. So that's you know that's that's what what we share in in built to last. Um, if I dare do a little plug before I go and see my little boy, um, built to last workshop is is now uh, going to be coming to an internet browser near you soon. <laughs> it's coming online. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds yeah. great. Uh, so my, I, I've, I've, I, 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 I could chat and chat and chat and chat. Yeah. I could go on and on and on, um, you know, cause I'm, I'm passionate. I'm, I'm really passionate on, on trying to, to help people and, and, and help the industry not make the same mistakes, um, that I made. And I speak to loads of people that have not made the mistakes that, that I've made and still think, well, there's, there's good value here. Maybe I've not made the mistakes that these people have made or what other people have made in the industry, but I could tighten up my marketing. I could tighten up my systems. I wish I had more time. I wish I made more profit. And that's, you know, that's what we, we, we do in, in Built to Last in built to last workshop and then when we're in the built to last members club it, it's a community of um plumbing and heating engineers across the uk that are, are sharing their their experiences sharing their highs sharing the lows sharing little nuggets it's all about the community that's the um yeah and i think the, hmm? the biggest thing that you can offer there is is that wealth of experience but also the mistakes that you've made and being very open with that. And that's something that a lot of people just don't transparently admit. And I think that is, that's really, really valuable because people are going to have a lot of respect for that. If they can hear you talk about what you've learned from the mistakes you've made, that helps them avoid the, the same mistakes. That's, that's huge for anyone who started a business. I think if they can speak to someone who can, point at some mistakes you do have to make yourself but uh, there's a lot of shortcuts you can make if someone is able to articulate that so i can see like how valuable that could be yeah yeah and you know i i share it where i can um we that's what the community is for that's what the the boiler business community for is there for it's for people to talk about the business side of of our trade it's friendly it's open there's a lot of good value um, shared shared there. Put on top of that some some guided framework of of learning, and for a lot of people, it's it's helping you get get out of the woods. Basically, everybody's path is different. You cannot copy somebody else. It's not a one size fits all. You cannot answer um, an ad that pops up on social media with some fantastic looking teeth promising to make you seven figures next next year okay it, it don't work like that because every business is different so what we need to do is is get the knowledge and when we get the knowledge we have more choices but once we've got the choices we've actually got to do the hard work of implementing it so it's it, you know there's more to it we need the learning then we need the motivation and the backing and the support to actually do the implementation side of it as as well. Fantastic. Uh, there mm -hmm. is loads more I'd love to delve into, but I I, I, I sense sense you need to go see your family. Um, I'm, I'm imagining my, my little boy's going to come through with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. He's, he's not played with Thomas the Tank Engine since for a good few years, but I noticed him back into it the Getting other day. Nice. So, yeah. So Matt, uh, thank, thank you very much for, um, for inviting me along. We can do this. We can have a part two. I, have to a part be honest, three. the bit that I want to go into at some point is the, that marketing side, cause that's the bit that you got right. And the story of what you did there, I, I think is a fascinating one. So we'll save that for next time. Um, but okay. it's, it's been fantastic having you on. Um, and uh, thanks very much. Let's, uh, yeah, we'll speak soon. We will do, my friend. Toodle pip. Cheers.
Wow. This episode with Tommy Lee's Muda was incredible. If you're listening to the show, please hit the follow or subscribe button. It helps all the guests that you're listening to on the show and it helps us deliver more episodes full of top business tips.